All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, today we are going to discuss chapter six of Mastering Shiny Book that is about layout, uh, theming in Shiny apps, and the use of HTML, uh, advanced as well as uh, basic usage. But in the chapter, uh, we don't go into a lot of advanced HTML usage, but some resources that are relevant. Um, so this disclaimer is about a change in the chapter, which happened early on, uh, it's not relevant now. And in this chapter, the main things that are discussed are creating uh, raw HTML using only R, uh, HTML elements uh, that we can use to modify the appearance of the Shiny app, uh, the CSS that we use for styling, uh, Bootstrap, which is one of the most popular frameworks uh, used in HTML for arranging different components of the app. And we'll also discuss uh, that Shiny produces single page applications. Multi-page layouts are also possible, uh, but uh, just, to, uh, just to know, multi-page layouts are not uh, actually multi-page. It's just a single page but using tabs, we can make the app appear or look to have multiple pages. So in the slides, we have a few resources, uh, which are great to dig into different components that are not available officially. Uh, for example, if you look into the awesome Shiny extensions, there is a lot of, uh, uh, UI components that you can use outside of uh, official Shiny inputs and outputs. And there are many different ways for theming as well. If I go into theming, uh, PSLib is now the officially supported uh, package that is used and is recommended for theming. But there are many existing frameworks that use different versions of Bootstrap and uh, provide different types of looks. Uh, Shiny dashboard is uh, another thing which is now not recommended to be used. Uh, BSLib package is used for or recommended by the Shiny team to uh, create uh, dashboards. Uh, if you look into the Shiny application layout guide, this is also updated. Uh, we can see it's updated this year and it heavily uses the BSLib package. Uh, that's why you would see uh, page underscore sidebar, uh, which is from BSLib instead of uh, sidebar page, which is uh, part of Shiny. And similarly, fluid page uh, is now replaced with page underscore fluid and so on. So we'll see examples of both today. Um, and then there are some helpful resources for uh, looking into how HTML works, uh, what are different uh, properties uh, in CSS, how we can use the properties of tags of HTML to uh, change the look of uh, the Shiny components. And there's also this nice book, Outstanding User Interfaces uh, for Shiny. And uh, this has a nice chapter on uh, manipulating HTML tags. Uh, we won't go into the details of this, but with HTML tools package, you can make a lot of changes uh, on your UI components uh, and that changes uh, the look of the, the Shiny apps by a lot. Bootstrap, as I said before, is one of the frameworks uh, that lets you uh, create layouts for the Shiny apps and Shiny app uses Bootstrap by default. Uh, the latest version uh, of Shiny now uses Bootstrap version 5, which is also the latest version. Um, and SAS is also used uh, behind the scenes by the VSLib package. SAS is used for uh, manipulating the CSS files. So you can compile CSS files if you write SAS, uh, or you can provide the CSS code directly into the SAS file as well. And then there are some other uh, R packages for theming and lay laying out the Shiny app, as we discussed uh, in the awesome Shiny um, resources. And uh, 
BSLIP, as indicated here, this is one of the more uh, popular and recommended by the Shiny team. So in a typical web app or the Shiny app for us, um, in the browser, we have the front end. Uh, we see uh, HTML file that defines the content of the app. The CS file, CSS files define how the app looks and JavaScript handles interactivity. But even if we are not writing JavaScript by ourselves, there's, there's some JavaScript that Shiny uses behind the scenes as well. On the server end, we have requests that are received from the user or the client, and R performs the computations based on those requests that are sent by the client, and these uh, send the responses to the client back from the server, depending on what kind of calculation the, the client is requesting for. HTML is uh, uh, also called as hypertext, mark, hypertext markup language uh, is uh, the language of the browser. Uh, we can view an HTML uh, code uh, behind the Shiny app or the UI components of the Shiny app. If we uh, do this step, we look at uh, the source or the end or we inspect it and then we open the developer tools. So let's take a look at uh, the very basic Shiny app so here we have uh, something that is generated if we use the Shiny app snippet. Uh, for example, in the console, if I just type Shiny app, this creates this snippet. And this is essentially what I'm showing here. So this is the basic structure of a Shiny app. And we don't have any uh, UI components, no inputs, no outputs. Uh, if I run this, it opens up in this uh, browser tab. And if I do inspect, it then shows the HTML behind uh, the Shiny app. So we have the head component within the HTML tag, and we also have the body uh, tag here. Within the body, we have uh, a class container fluid. So this is a container that will contain inputs and outputs that we specify for our Shiny app. And we can see the same thing inside R as well if we uh, just run the UI component. So if we run library Shiny and then fluid page uh, for the UI and then take a look at the UI, it shows us that it's essentially a container, uh, a fluid container which is a class of Bootstrap. This is one of the ways to express the layout inside, uh, inside the browser. So this is another example where a different Shiny app was used uh, and we see the HTML behind that app, where we have the title page for the Shiny app, we have a heading one, and we also have a paragraph, which is a result of uh, the uh, text output. The so Fluid page, as we were discussing before, is something that is used uh, most of the times, uh, which is now uh, recommended to be replaced with uh, page underscore fluid. And the HTML body for the UI that is created with your page can be viewed directly as I showed you uh, on, on the RStudio uh, window. And it would then show us that it is a fluid container, one of the classes in Bootstrap. Render page is uh, another way to look at the UI uh, or the HTML behind the UI. And that would print this thing uh, as we uh, as we saw before. So this would also include the script tag, which is essentially what Shiny uses behind the scenes to import uh, the required JavaScript. So if you are familiar with HTML, then you can actually write your full UI with HTML alone you would write your raw HTML and you would wrap it within 
the HTML function from HTML tools. You provide that inside a container and your UI can be used directly. But because most uh, app users in Shiny and R are not familiar with HTML, they would likely use the inputs and outputs uh, that are provided by Shine. So this is uh, the same HTML that was provided uh, while uh, creating this app. There are also uh, HTML helpers. Uh, for example, we have tags. Uh, these are the HTML tags, and these are imported from the HTML tools package, uh, or I should say re-exported within Shiny uh, from HTML tools package. And anything that we have in HTML uh, that is, uh, or the HTML tags, they are available through uh, the tags uh, function uh, inside Shiny. So in this case, we see uh, that a unordered list is created by providing two items. And then that is uh, converted to this HTML. Yeah, and I, I think this is this is the one is the most recommended way to creating HTML if you want to create an HTML uh, using uh, using just R yeah. without like going back to writing like the tags itself. So yeah, I, I myself use it, use this package, but if uh, in the Python side, this is existing uh, as well. So this tags dot, uh, dot in, in Python is the same here with tags, tags uh, dollar sign. So it's the same, um, but they, they both depend on the HTML tool package. So yeah. That's great to know that with Python, you can do the same thing. Um, so CSS uh, is used for styling the Shiny apps. And there are some resources. Uh, so the Mozilla network has resources on learning about CSS. And as we discussed, this book, Outstanding User Interfaces with Shiny, uh, has some multiple chapters that teach how to use CSS for styling the apps and existing uh, packages in R that would let you use uh, some existing templates. Uh, so for any uh, tag in, in HTML that we want to style, uh, we look at its class and, or we can specify a class to that tag. And if we have a class, for example, my class, we can then provide different properties to that class inside CSS. Uh, for example, here we provide the color red and this will use uh, a font color of red for uh, this particular class, wherever we use it. It could be, for example, in a paragraph tag, it could be in a span tag and so on. Uh, when we want to use some JavaScript, we put all these uh, static files, JavaScript and CSS in the www directory uh, in our Shiny app folder. And here's one example. Here we use Fluid Page and uh, we provide uh, the link. Uh, within the link, we provide the style sheet. So uh, assuming that we have a style sheet called uh, style.css, where we have all the CSS properties, uh, we provide that as href inside link. And we need to specify uh, these two arguments as well, which is uh, that it is a style sheet and the type is CSS. And now uh, when we use class equals to my class, it will use the color that we have specified for my class. So Bootstrap is uh, another way to style uh, HTML elements or UI components in a Shiny app. And Bootstrap offers a lot of existing classes where you won't have to change uh, the color or specify the color and background color and fonts by yourself. The Bootstrap has components and utility classes that already have a lot of those things. And you can specify the color once and then use them 
in multiple cases. For example, you can use primary colors and you can use secondary colors, success, danger, and warning colors. So BSLib has uh, this function, BS underscore team, that if you specify inside your UI, it would help you control all the colors and also fonts of your Shiny app. Uh, so there are multiple things that you can change. You can provide the background color for the app. You can provide the foreground color. So this would be the text color on top of the background. Uh, you can provide primary, secondary, success, information, warning, and danger colors, which you can use, for example, inside a value box that you create. So the background of the value box or its font color can be controlled directly with these colors. You just need to provide the colors once here. And for example, if I say primary is dark blue, I can then use that color in many different components, uh, for example, inside a value box directly. I don't have to provide the colors multiple times myself, uh, either in the CSS style sheet or uh, inside uh, the R scripts uh, individually. I just have to provide that once. We can also provide uh, the font, uh, the font type. Uh, it could be uh, different types of fonts. So uh, you can provide what the heading font looks like. Uh, and we can use either uh, the existing font on your machine that you need to put inside the www folder. Uh, and then in that case, you would use the function font underscore face from BSLib. But if you like a font that is available on Google Fonts, you can then use the font underscore Google function. And the default argument here, local, is equal to true. And if you provide local equals to true, then uh, it would download this font even on the deployed app, not only uh, when you are running the app locally, but also if you deploy it, it would download this app uh, inside uh, your uh, folder, the Shiny app folder, and it will then use that font uh, for uh, your base font. Heading font can also be uh, separately specified, and if you are showing some code, that can also be separately specified. So there are multiple fonts that you can use in each of these cases. In this example, we see two. We see the font underscore Google is downloading Pacifico, and the second one is sans serif. Uh, so if this, for some reason, fails to download, then the second one will be used. You can also provide uh, other ways to style your Shiny apps. Uh, one other way is to use boot swatch themes. Uh, so these are the same themes. If you are familiar with Quarto, Quarto also can use boot swatch themes. Uh, so there are many existing themes. Uh, you can use, uh, for example, here we can provide wood swatch equals to uh, sandstone, and then you don't need to uh, manually specify the background and foreground color because the theme comes with those colors. And you can try those themes on your own uh, and experiment with them. You can also, uh, for example, provide dark themes, and in the newer versions of BSLib, there are also ways to specify. Uh, both the dark theme and the light theme. So your user can choose which one to use. Um, again, this is uh, the HTML version of uh, the Shiny app after we provide theme underscore dark. So it would then uh, change the HTML and uh, we would see the dark theme in the Shiny app. Anything you'd like to discuss about this? So while we are discussing layouts, I can also show you uh, the example of using BSLib uh, for uh, not only laying out the Shiny app, but also the colors. So in the single page layouts, uh, there is uh, one example that uses Fluid Page and it also uses sidebar layout. So let's first look at the app and then we'll look at the code. So here we see that we have on the left a sidebar panel uh, where we have the input for uh, a numeric input. So we can increase the numbers of samples 
And on the right, we have a plot output that is showing a histogram. Now let's see uh, what the code looks like within the fluid page function, which will contain to create a container. And that container uh, essentially contains both the sidebar panel and the plot output. So we provide the sidebar panel using the sidebar layout. And within the main panel, we provide the plot output and the relevant uh, server uh, calculation is uh, within render plot, as you can see here. Uh, PSLIP now uses page underscore fluid instead of fluid page. So if I stop this app and then run this newer one, uh, we can compare uh, the difference in the appearance of the app. So this is what used to be the look of Shiny, the default look. And this is the newer look using PSLIP. So again, we have on the left, there's a sidebar and we have the same functionality, uh, but you can see that there is a drastic change in how the app looks. Uh, so let's look at the relevant functions. In this case, instead of using a fluid page, uh, there is an equivalent function called page underscore fluid. But since I wanted to show the sidebar, which you can also close, um, I use the page underscore sidebar function. So there are multiple new arguments uh, in this function compared to fluid page, uh, where we see we need to specify the title of the app. Uh, there is this additional argument called language, uh, which is great for uh, HTML uh, when uh, your app is deployed online and it is parsed by the search engines. They would recognize that this is uh, an app for uh, English and so uh, it would be uh, in the search results for uh, English uh, language. So it is. Uh, it makes the uh, search uh, optimization of the app, uh, I think, better compared to uh, the previous version of the Shiny app. Uh, within the sidebar function, we can provide what goes inside the sidebar. Uh, and here we provide the numeric input, as we saw before. Uh, here I have the theme part commented out. I mean, comment this in. And then here I'm showing you that we can use uh, a Google font, for example, Roboto Mono. And we can provide a different background, foreground, and multiple colors as we discussed before. Uh, this may not look very great, but this is just to show you that you can now significantly change uh, your app. Uh, probably the reason why this did not work is because uh, I probably have to uh, restart it. Let me try this again. Yeah, uh, sometimes uh, the colors are not detected right away. So if I restart R, this may show us those colors. So now we see a different uh, color. You can see uh, it, it does not look, uh, um, it actually does look uh, uh, the color that I specified here. Uh, the primary color uh, is something that I did not really use. I specified it here, but I did not use uh, primary color in any of the components. Uh, in this case, you can see the font is definitely different. This is the Roboto Mono font, and you can see the color for the sidebar and the navigation bar have changed. And uh, that color is the background color that I specified. The foreground color is the font color for central limit theorem and number of samples, as you can see here. So these are examples of the single page layout. And let me see if I am missing anything from the book. Yeah, so there are multiple uh, uh, multiple rows that you can also specify. So previously, uh, Shiny used to um, recommend fluid row functions with column functions to specify the number of rows and columns and the width of those columns. This still works, uh, but with VSLIP, 
there is a different approach to uh, control the layout, the multi-row layout. Uh, let's take a look at uh, the original one first. Uh, so this is with an example from the chapter, which uses fluid row. So let's first look at the app. So here we have three tables. Uh, so here we have uh, the uh, drop down menu uh, for selecting one of the products. And we have three tables uh, which are printed out and changed according to what I select in the product. So this is what uh, the original Shiny app looks like if you use the fluid row and the column functions. So if you notice here, this is one row at the top, and then we have another row where we have uh, three tables, and each of the three tables has spaces between them. And then at the bottom, there's a full usage of the row, which has a plot. So if we go back and then look at the code, we see that in the first fluid row, we have a column it should be uh, six uh, in width. So uh, with Bootstrap, the shiny uses behind the scenes, we have 12 column layout. So the width, the entire width of the page is 12 columns. If we use six, it would then take uh, the length of a six column uh, layout. And based on that, uh, we first provide that width and then we provide the select input, which is this thing. Similarly, we have two more rows, uh, the second one for the tables, the third one for the plot, and we provide three columns. Each is four widths, uh, four, four uh, units wide, and we have table outputs, which we can see here. So with fluid row and column code, it automatically adds these spaces for us. And at the end, we provide a 12 row, uh, sorry, 12 wide, uh, 12 unit wide column. Uh, that's why we get a plot uh, at the end, which takes the full width of the app. Now let's see how that looks like. Uh, do you still see my screen? Um, no, we, we cannot. No. <laughs> no. Second. Okay, now do you see it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, go. Uh, let's take a look at the BSLIP uh, version of the same app. So in this case, we again use page underscore fluid. And instead of using fluid row and column, we can now specify uh, the columns using the layout underscore columns function. And we don't need to specify the rows separately but we can control the height of the row uh, within layout columns if we want. So with layout columns, again, the concept is the same. We have uh, a, a, an app which has a full page width of 12 columns, and we can provide, for example, this first uh, input, and we say that within layout columns, the column width should be four. Since there's only one component here, there will only be one column that will be used and it will use a width of four. Uh, let's look at this app. So now it's using a width of four and it looks almost the same as the app that we saw before, uh, but there are some differences. So with layout columns here, I provide only one input. So just one column width is used. For the second one, we want three tables. So we provide the tables, the table output. And within column widths, I provide uh, th these numbers for specifying that uh, each of these tables should use uh, three columns. And 
between them, there should be uh, a, a space of one uh, or one column. So this is three columns wide, then we have a space of one column, then three columns, then one column, and then three columns. And again, when we use layout columns and we provide a single input and we do not specify the column bits, what happens is it would then use all 12 columns by default. So that's why we see uh, the plot on the full bit at the end. Uh, any questions about this? Um, yeah. yeah, I just want to see if, uh, if you want to use this kind of layout, how is this better than the, the other one? Uh, for this example, the one we saw, it, it, there's, uh, I wouldn't say that one is better over the other, uh, but for more complicated apps uh, where you have a lot of components, uh, there what you can do is you can use the uh, DID, uh, I think it's called DID evaluation, where you use the bang bang uh, uh, operator to, pro to first create the components separately, and then at the end you provide them here. Uh, one of the components with VSLib is uh, cards, uh, which I, I think uh, did not exist in the default Shiny, but uh, we can take a look. So if you define the cards first and um, then you specify layout columns, it will automatically figure out how many columns to use and we don't need to specify the bits uh, of those columns. So here's uh, one example. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so here we have multiple cards. So there's a list of cards that is created. And then once it is created, this list is provided using these uh, bang bang operators within the page sidebar. And it will automatically figure out where to put all those cards. You can still uh, make changes uh, and make further uh, layout changes to it, uh, but this would automatically figure out uh, the layout and it would appear uh, one over the other like this, so in a, in a row uh, format. Uh, with default Shiny, you would have to use, uh, not default, the older version of Shiny, you need to use fluid row and columns um, for specifying these. So, yeah, yeah. so this page would be uh, very useful. Uh, I can link this uh, in our uh, channel page later. Yeah. All right. Um, then we can also create multi-page layouts. Um, uh, and as I said before, multi-page layouts are not actually multiple page shiny apps. Uh, because they don't exist. Uh, Shiny apps are always a single page. That's why the URL never changes, even if you switch from one uh, supposed page to another one. Essentially what happens is behind the scenes, it's using tab sets. So let's take a look at one example of tab sets. Here we have a tab set panel. Uh, this is what the app looks like. So if I switch from one tab to another, it would then show me the, uh, the content in that app. So this is using the older uh, version of uh, Shiny, where we have a sidebar panel, main panel, that has all those tabs. Uh, with VSLib, we can uh, use Navlist panel, uh, which would look similar in this example. If I run that, uh, this is what it would look uh, for Navless panel. Actually, this is another of the older version examples uh, where we're using Navless panel. One way to find out which one is the older version of Shiny layout and which one is the VSLib version is to look at the case. So in this case, this is camel case. All the functions in VSLib are uh, uh, snake case. So uh, this is another uh, panel set where we can see uh, that we can switch from one panel to another and uh, there's a sidebar on the left. If we look at 
uh, the VSLib version of that. There we have this function navset pill list. It looks a little different, but essentially uh, use the same concept. And so this is with the uh, with Shiny alone, and this is with VSLib. So again, it's, it's the same concept, but uses the VSLib functions, which are now the layout recommended by the Shiny team. Okay, so we covered that. Uh, let's see. Um, I think, yeah, just one comment, a little comment. I think there is a, there's a way to have a, a multi-page, a real multi-page uh, Shiny app. Um, I don't know if, it's, if it exists in the book, but there's something called routing where you specify uh, a URL, different URLs that and map those URLs to different Shiny apps um, or pages. And that's why we can like have this kind of multi-page, real multi-page application with Shiny. So I don't know if it's existing in the book or not, but um, it's existing in Shiny uh, for Python. So I, I, I don't know if it's, if it's existing in R as well or not. So in R, but... uh, there is a package called as Shiny Router. It, this chapter does not talk about it. I don't know if uh, another chapter does in the book. Uh, but Shiny Router package would let you do what you suggested. Uh, but it's not very um, mature, I would say. Uh, it, I think it's good for a few pages, but uh, it's a lot of work that you need to first do, and then you would be able to use it as a multi-page app. There's one package by Colin Fay who created the Golem framework. He was working on a package called as brochure, uh, which was for multi-page Shiny app, but unfortunately, he's not working on the project anymore. Uh, yeah, for Python, I think there is an existing uh, good example, as you mentioned, so it would be worthwhile using that. Um, another uh, layout is navigation bar a page. Uh, so this is the shiny version of page underscore nav bar. Uh, again, you see this, let me stop this first. So this is what it looks like. We have, so it appears to be multiple pages. So we have uh, multiple uh, tabs here and then our panels and we can use uh, a menu here as well for specifying which uh, page to go to. And if I go back here. Uh, so essentially what it's using is it's using tab panel inside navigation bar page. And each of those tab panels are like pages. And within nav bar menu, we have further pages as you can see here. If you look at the page underscore nav bar, the VSLib version of the same app, uh, instead of uh, tab panels, it uses nav panels. And instead of nav bar menu, it uses nav menu. So if you look at it, this is what it looks like. It's using the uh, Bootstrap version five, so the appearance is different from um, the previous example, this one. It's really interesting that uh, uh, Shiny for Python and Shiny for R now is using the same kind of uh, function layouts. Um, yeah. Since they are both, both are depending on uh, Bootstrap 5 now. Yeah, I heard that they created VSLib for Python as well, which which uh, they are using behind the scenes. Yeah, that's really awesome. And um, you see that when you build both application in Shiny for Python and Shiny for R, now you have this kind of similarity in function calls since they are using the snake case uh, yeah. in building functions. So uh, eventually you will, you will know both by the time uh, without you noticing, so yeah. Yeah, and I also found one example that uses the uh, tabs uh, very cleverly. Uh, let me see if I can find it. So, local 
um, example that I downloaded. So it uses the uh, shiny uh, functions tab panels, but it lets you switch from one uh, to another. And that is possible uh, because uh, they want to show login uh, information. So at, at the beginning of the app, you can log in uh, or register in different uh, cards. And the tab panels will switch from one card to another, depending on which link you are clicking. So let's see if this works. I'm running it locally and then hopefully it would appear in the browser. Uh, do you see uh, the login page? Yeah. yeah. So this is using tab panels. There's a lot more HTML tools used in this app. So I'm not uh, showing the source code, but I can uh, share the source code uh, in the Slack channel. Uh, so once you provide uh, these uh, inputs, it will then show you the full app. Uh, if you switch to the register page, it would then switch from one tab panel to another. And here you can provide the registration information. So I think this is a cool use of tab panels in China. Yeah, pretty, really cool. And I think this is also linked in a database or something, right? Uh, in this example, it is not. Uh, this is the FRBS examples uh, that I found on GitHub. Uh, I'll share it. Uh, but in this particular example, there is no direct uh, linkage with a particular database. It uses the Firestore database from Google Cloud, uh, but you need to specify your API to use that. Um, and so we discussed the uh, single page and multi page layouts. Uh, this case study is from the slides. Uh, we've already seen the case study uh, from the book, so I'm not going to discuss this one unless you have questions about this. Um, and in the book, uh, there's a discussion on bootstrap. So as we discussed with PSLib, uh, there is there's a lot that you can do uh, just by specifying the font and the colors within VS underscore theme. Uh, another uh, nice thing with VS Lib is that you can actually, um, uh, you can uh, create uh, the theme on the fly as you are building the uh, Shiny app. While the Shiny app is running, you can actually see uh, how the uh, app works. So, uh, sorry, not how the app works, but how the app looks. You can change that on the fly if you specify BS underscore theme um, within server. So in this example, uh, let me try that. So BS lib, BS underscore theme. We run that. It would hopefully show a menu on the right that would let us control uh, the app. Uh, and it did not do that. Uh, let's see. Maybe it's a different function. We go to teaming. Or, yeah, it should be BS teamer. So if I go back and run that. So now, as you can see, there is this uh, menu at the top. Uh, this is Team Customizer. You can provide any boots, uh, boots watch team. So now, uh, BSLib uses a Shiny preset, which is uh, pretty uh, cool looking, uh, in my opinion. Uh, there's also this Bootstrap uh, team that you can use. But there are others, uh, for instance, Morph, uh, Cosmo. So there are multiple teams that you can try and see which one you like better. But if you don't like one or you want to further customize it, 
uh, you can then uh, change the background and foreground color is essentially using the BS underscore theme function uh, that you specify in UI. Uh, but it gives you that, uh, that uh, function uh, arguments back once you are done with the app. So if I, for example, select a different color uh, like this for background, and I specify uh, a color here for the foreground, it may be horrible looking, but uh, we can specify primary colors and, and other colors so within accent colors tab. We can also specify fonts. So this would use fonts that are already uh, installed on your machine or if a font you found on Google Fonts, you can just specify the name here and it will automatically download it. So for instance, if I use this one from Google Fonts, I would hopefully use it. Uh, let's see. For some reason, it's not updating it right away, but when I was trying it uh, before the uh, meeting, it was working, so it should load and and uh, show us the results right away. But if not, uh, it's probably because I'm trying this in Posit Cloud. Uh, it should actually update as a theme using BS theme update, and within uh, the function, it should update all of the arguments that I changed. So you can definitely try this uh, locally. For some reason, with Posit Cloud, it's not updating it. But this is very helpful while you are prototyping and experimenting <laughs> with colors. Yeah, yeah, very cool looking also. And it's like live styling. You give the, you abstract away the, the styling from the code and give it to the customer itself. So you could change as he does and if he if he wanted a customized or branded way of seeming now you could like do the the customization yourself yeah um one last thing uh, that i'd like to share is uh the thematic uh package uh for example if we use so i'm going to uncomment to be a steamer here and in this app, we are specifying the bootswash theme darkly, which will create the dark uh, theme. And if I run that, uh, and we see uh, that it is black background, but we see that the plot is also black, although I did not specify anything about colors for my plot. If you look at my plot here, uh, there's nothing uh, about colors that I specify. But because of thematic underscore shiny function from the thematic package that we uh, loaded uh, here, it would automatically figure out what color is appropriate and then show that color based on the theme color. So it's about 90% successful in most cases. Uh, in some cases, it, uh, it may not work great, but in most cases it would. So it is very useful uh, in my opinion. All right, um, any questions? No, oh, no, yeah, that's what great. Um, thank you for uh, having this effort uh, to, uh, to go back to the documentation and have this kind of uh, sample code. Uh, this was very useful, the same as we know that Mustang Shiny is not updated that much now, uh, since uh, the last version. And I don't know if it, there is, uh, they're planning to update it uh, in the future, but uh, mainly I would advise or recommend that anyone that watches those videos or uh, having the, try to read this book, try to go to the documentation more often and go and read about the packages. Don't just, um, watch or uh, follow the examples because uh, this is actually coding. So coding is changing by time. This is eventually a fact. So uh, therefore, you have to to be keep keep up update yourself with the shiny versions all the times, and uh, you have to go and try it yourself. There's there's a lot of stuff that's changing uh, rapidly 
in the Chinese community. And uh, it's cool that it, it make it more useful, more uh, user friendly, more um, more robust. And this is at the same time, you you have to keep up with this up, those up kind of updates. So, yeah, it's pretty interesting that um, I'm just saying that you 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 don't need to depend too much on the this uh, the book the codes itself. You should have your own like uh, like kind of code coding experience with uh, with the shiny documentation itself. And yeah, that's my last hour. Oh. Yeah, I agree. Uh, thank you. I think we should stop now.